So in this video here, we're going to see how we can run a VLM in real time. So this is a vision language model that takes in images and also video, just as any large language model out there, as we know from ChatGPT and so on, but it can also take images, videos and so on. So we get into this multi-model world. Let's just jump straight into it. We can go in here. We have this small VLM from Hug and Face. They have created some small real-time vision language models that can pretty much run close to real-time depending on the hardware that you're running it on. But if you have a good GPU, you can actually like run it all the way down to 30, 40 milliseconds inference time for each image. We can even get away with it in just a few hundred milliseconds, even if you can just run it in a few seconds. That's still a lot of cool stuff that you can do and a ton of applications. And we can just see the direction where this space is heading. We usually have the small models doing update takes in the YOLO models and all that. But now we're going to get these vision language models. They're only going to be smaller, but also better. So it's very clear the direction that is going is also very powerful to combine the real time fast processing that doesn't really require that much resource. Because again, we need some very good hardware to be able to run these models for now. So we can have a smaller model do detections and then we can actually have a larger model go in and verify those detections depending on what you want to detect in the images. So this is a pretty cool demo. They have put together one engineer from Hog and Face. They have this small VLM. It's going to use a base API. So I think this is fast API it's running. We need to set that up and then they have a basic HTML page that basically just opens it up, shows the image and also you can give it instructions and you will get the response back. So one of the important things here that we need to use is Llama CPP. This is how we can run language models pretty much just on the edge on our local system. If you know Olama, it's also very similar to that. If you go inside Llama CCP, go down into the bottom, we can see we have a Llama server for multi-model support. We have the description, supported backends. So this is all the different backends that it supports. If you have a good modern Apple GPU, or computer, you can run these models very quick on that as well. It's going to use Metal, so it's also going to run on the Apple GPU. Use CUDA if you have an NVIDIA GPU and want to run it as fast as possible. But these models here, they act like only, they go all the way down to 250, uh, 250 million parameters, so we have less than a billion parameters. Usually when we're talking about big vision language models, ChatGPT and so on, like there are hundreds of billions of parameters. So first of all here, we can see building the project, so how to build it on Mac OS on Linux. We can basically just install the Rebrew. Depending on what you use, you can also use the Docker image if you want to run a Docker container with the server. So all the stuff that we're doing here is pretty much just grab this one. We can open a terminal. We can brew install it. I'll have it up and running on my computer, but this is everything that we need to do on Mac. So now we have Llama CCP, then we can just run the Llama server as we saw in there. It can also just be a dark container. And you might need to add this if you're on GPU, if you're using NVIDIA, AMD or Intel GPUs. They also specify that we're going to try other models. We'll try out a few different models. I'll show you how we can swap them out and then we can optionally change the instruction. So it basically just, for example, make return JSON. So this will be structured output that it can return as well instead of just having a response here with text. Could be that you want to verify something in the image here. Is there a copy in the image? You can have a Pydantic base model if you're working with agents and so on. I'm putting out a lot more videos about AI agents, how to build systems around it, how to get into that space and all that. Also helping out the team on my in my AI career program, where I basically just teach people the system that I'm doing, helping them out, getting into AI engineering, computer vision, start building agents and all that. I'm pretty much like building way more agents now. So this is everything that we need. We all can also just clone the GitHub repo here. So there we go. We just need to grab our terminal again. We can clone it, get clone. We have a repo. I already have it up and running. So right now I can just go into it. There we go. Let's open it up with cursor. Cursor dot. It's going to open up cursor. We can grab our index HTML file here and basically just open it up once we have the server running. Can probably spin up a new terminal while we're waiting for it and just see one of the other models that I should have downloaded already. So it's basically just going to set up a local server, could be a fast API endpoint, and then you can just call that endpoint, you will get the response back. So this is the exact same way as if you make an API call to 
Gemini, OpenAI, or whatever. This is just running locally. So we grab this command here. Right now we can just go in and run it. We will use the small 500 million parameter instruction model. And we use GGUF from GGML org. So this is actually like Hogan Face that has all of this here. They support a ton of different models. This small model here is also from Hogan Face. There we go. Now we can see that we have it up and running. Our server is running. Hello. Hey there. How are you? And then it's basically just listening on this port. So this is the port that we can send our request to and then we'll get our responses back from our vision model. So the only thing that we have to do here, go in, grab our index HTML file. You can integrate this into whatever app that you want, have any user interface. You can do it with Streamlit and so on as well. We should definitely just spin it up with Streamlit as well. Just create our own apps. So now we have my camera running up here. Then we go down and specify the interval between the request that we're going to send. There we go. Let's just say 500 milliseconds. Let's see how it works. So what do you see? A man using a microphone, the name of the sweater. Let's stop it here and make it a bit slower so we can actually like read what's going on. A man in a black sweater, a young man sitting at a desk near a microphone. AC, AC, so it doesn't really... It tries to read what's act like on my, on my hoodie here. M making a face. So it doesn't really, it's not really good at doing OCR and understanding text. Like maybe let's try to put it a bit closer up here. So it thinks, it thinks that I'm playing around with the microphone or whatever. It doesn't really understand the text, but this is also a very small model. We can't, re we can't expect like very good results with it. Let's try to go even faster, like 100 milliseconds. You can see how fast it's running. If we go back inside the terminal, There we go. We can see how fast it's actually like processing. If we grab it, image processed in 43 milliseconds. This is insanely fast. If we have 50 milliseconds, we're running 20 frames per second. So this is crazy speed that we're getting. We're getting 20 frames per second. I'm on a MacBook M4 Max. So that's also like a very good GPU that we're running it on. But if you have an NVIDIA GPU, higher NVIDIA hardware and all that, it's definitely going to be even faster. So this is the 500 million parameter model. So for this video, I'm actually partnering on up with another YouTuber that does a ton of trading, trading bots, algorithms, and all of that. Even inside my air career program, I teach trading, how people can get into it and so on. I'm very much into stock market trading and everything. I don't really have time. I put all my time into work. So I have automated trading bots basically just working in the background. I get a notification on my phone when it goes in and out of a trade. So this helps a ton, both saves my time. It makes some money in the background while I'm not really doing anything. We can check out the tool here that Moon Dev is using. Another YouTuber with 100,000 subscribers puts out a ton of content on YouTube as well. Here we can basically just see the program that he's, he's using. He's looking at the different positions. When do people get liquidated for the different trading bots that they have automatically set up. So all of this is tracked, all the strategies, everything is just automated with a trading strategy this is really helpful like if you don't really have time to put into it if you don't really care about the stocks if you just want to make a bit of, of side income pretty much go in and check it out on his website really cool guy and pretty much most of it he's putting it out on youtube you can go watch his channel and all that and also the program and trading boss and all that he's doing he has money back guarantee for all of it so definitely go in and check it out let's just go in here again we can go in and grab the other models they have I think I opened it up here at the top. There we go. So this is the multi modalities that they are supporting. There's pre-quantized models. So basically just quantized, quantized model down to four bits. So it's smaller models that can run fast as well. Trade off between a bit of accuracy, but we get significantly a higher speed. We also need to make sure that the models are not too large to be able to run on our hardware. Some of the very good models is the ones from Google. So for example, the, the Gemma model here, we can try to run that. So that's the Gemma. Uh, I think I can run all the way up to maybe 12, 12 billion. Let's try to go in and grab that model. And you can grab any model in here and basically just run it. So this is from GGML org, which is Hawk and Face 2. It's going to download the model here in the background. This is the first time I'm running this model. I've been testing out the 4B, 4 billion parameter model. That's also pretty good. But the 12B here should be very getting very good results from it will be slow on my on my gpu or like on my macbook here 
we can run the 256 million parameter model. I think I was getting around 30 milliseconds. So that's almost like 30 frames per second running this model here. It's not accurate at all. So if you want to run some of it on the edge now, of course, these models are going to improve, become better over time. I'll definitely recommend like going with the 500 mil. Maybe if you can run it like 2.2, depending on how fast you want to run the models. These are some very good models. They also have a video variation, so it has more and better temporal information between two requests and the images that it's feeding into it. Because at the end of the day, it's just feeding in images step by step, but it will have some more temporal information knowing about what is the order of the images and all that. These are all the models covered. They have audio models, mixed modalities with the, with the Quen models. Quen 2.5 here, also a very good vision, vision language model. 32, you can get it all the way up to 72 billion parameters. You'll need a pretty good GPU with a lot of memory for that. The good thing about the Apple, Apple model is pretty much just, or the Apple hardware, is that they have the unified memory. So even just on your laptop, you'll be able to run these models locally on the GPU with the same RAM as your CPU is using. So if you have a 32 gigabyte laptop, you'll be able to run 32 gigabytes on your GPU. If you want equivalent NVIDIA GPU to be able to run that, we're talking about like an 800 or like an L40S or something like that. So right now, I think it's still downloading here. It might take some time since it's a, it's a pretty large model. So let's go ahead and grab this command again. It's the Llama server. You could also use it with Olama or whatever. It's just a server that runs the model and then you spin up an endpoint that we can connect two there we go let's run the llama server it's the wrong model let's go in and try we're going to try the bigger model so let's go in and try run the small version so this one we can even take the video example the video version looks like the other one is finishing up hog and face there we go 256 video instruction so it's running here on the left side now let's just close that while the other one is running Let's open up our window. Let's see if we have some something of a running start. We can also add like instructions, whatever. They also mentioned that we can go in and, and use structured output. Let's start it. So now we get more detailed response here with this model. And this model we're running is act like the video model. So it's not just individual images, but it has temporal information. We get way more here. We get way more output compared to just the standard image model. So it, it makes a difference if you're running the image or the, let's try to see how fast this is running, 100 milliseconds. Maybe it was the other model that was running. Let's check. So this is pretty fast. Let's see how fast it's running. It's 40, 40 milliseconds. Um, this is the video model, so that's probably why it's a bit slower. But now we can see we get way more details compared to before. Let's just try to stop it and see what we act like get. So right now it's just casting images might need to handle this with the uh, with the front end that we have and loading in the images and all that because right now it's just buffering the images so it will lag if your camera is faster than the processing speed so this is definitely a bug that needs to be fixed but let's create a streamlit application i'll create a streamlit application spinning around this for actually like solving all these different problems maybe combining it with a yolo model or whatever now we can see that it has finished up the image shows a person seated at a desk wearing a black hoodie with the text i can do it written on it so it's not good it's not good at ocr the person is engaged in conversation with the hands moving in sync with the movement the background is a dark, dark color which helps to highlight the person and the desk they're sitting at has a laptop and a mouse so it's, can you can even see the laptop here that's pretty that's pretty amazing a mouse and a cup so that's pretty cool that you can see even the mouse here suggesting a workspace or home office soft and ambient with no harsh shadows very good very good results from a very small model that can pretty much run real time let's try the other one here which is the gamma 12 billion parameter model i think we need to rerun it here in just a second make sure that it runs let's make sure that we cancel this one we didn't so it should be listening on that port Main server is listening on this port. There we go. On this, let's see. So let's just what do you see? Let's just run it. Let's see how fast it is. Processing started. It's already like slower compared to before. You can see here we got the results. Image processed. So it took almost seven seconds to process this image. This is also a 12 billion 
parameter model. So it's pretty much 25 times heavier and bigger compared to the other model that we were running. Let's see if we get some better results. So here we're seeing the image, a man, he's sitting at a desk. Let's just stop it here. It appears to be a young man with short style blonde hair. He's wearing a dark hoodie with text on it. Let's try to see how good OCR it is. What is written on the hoodie? Start to ask this one here. Now it's basically just caching, uh, caching or buffering all the frames. So let's see how it does now. Reddish blonde hair, main focus, clothing here with a dark hoodie with a logo on the chest. So now it's, now it's not really trying to hallucinate and, and basically try to see what's in here, if it can see it. I still think it has buffered the images with the other instructions. So maybe let's just here, before we end it off, let's just cancel it. Let's rerun it. Let's make sure that we copy this one. Should be running. And then we will reload the program. Let's see, there we go, let's start it. Processing started, it will take a few seconds to process the image. So significantly slow model, but this is so cool that we can run these VLMs on the edge, local, without having to send it somewhere, and it's only going in one direction. So we'll see, it, it looks like it's processing, it's not really showing anything in the, in the UI right now. Let's maybe just try to close the application, Let's shut all of it down. I really want to show you guys this before we're going to end off the video. But it's clear, it's clear where the, the direction is heading. We can combine it for so many different use cases. And let's see this one. What is written on the hoodie? Let's go. Seven seconds. And then code. Oh, we got it. Oh, we missed the D. We missed the D. Let's try to check one more. We check one more. Oh, maybe because I was I was, I was hiding it. So let's just try to see here from, from the sideline. I'll just get these ones here away. That would be crazy if it's only a 12 billion parameter model can actually read that. Also now all of it is, is, is buffered again. So I, it would definitely have gotten it. I think it will have gotten it if it's like clear. You can still see it struggling and so on. But even the large vision language models from ChatGPT, OpenAI and all that, they also have problems with, uh, with logos and like smaller text like this. But I can pretty much see what's going on. You can get the instructions here. Check it out, run it if you have your hardware. CPU is going to be very slow. Check it out, make sure to track the future. I'm definitely staying ahead of it, making sure that I'm up to date with the VLMs, sharing all of it inside my AI career program, and all of it teaching you guys how the models work under the hood as well. Have some videos covering it. Hope you learned on this video here. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming ones. Until then, happy learning.